What's up, gang? It's Matt from Primary Complete. We've been getting a lot of questions from folks wanting to know how they can support the show. Honestly, it's crazy to us that people are even interested in this. But to answer the question, there are several ways. The biggest way is whatever platform you choose to listen to the show, rate it and leave a comment. The more five-star ratings we get and comments we get, the more our show is exposed on these platforms. Another is just talking to your friends. If you're sitting at the firehouse kitchen table and somebody shares a situation or something they're going through and you can remember a guest that we had or a past episode they may benefit from hearing, just suggest it to them. Lastly, if you feel so inclined, there's a donation link on the Primary Complete Podcast website. We can't possibly say thank you enough for all the love and support that you have sent our way. It's humbling to say the least, and we are continually grateful. We were talking about that political action stuff at uh, one sentence to sell. Dude, you're talking about the build the wall mm-hmm. and make abortion illegal. It's mm-hmm. one sentence. It's easy, it's easy in a TV ad. That's right. Yeah. 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 Parking, what are your position on the issues? And it's always like these just simple, one linear. They're not answers. They're not solutions. They're just taglines. You know, it's like national debt. Okay. And do a balanced budget, like a balanced budget amendment, which is a, definitely needs to happen. Okay, then how are we going to actually address the debt? Right. Yeah, there's things that need to be paid for. Right. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> I feel like there's somebody smart enough out there to probably figure a way out of that, but they just are, they're never listened to. Our country runs on debt. That's what we live off of. Yeah. So it, it's, the banks love it. Yeah. 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 If, if I was the guy, like if I was – the magic wand holder, throw this in on the beginning instead of the end, right? <laughs> uh, man, we spend so much money on things that I'm an idiot, but there's we send money like overseas to different places, and I'm like, what are they doing with it other than throwing bullets back at us? You know, there's we spend a lot of money on some stuff that I you wish did. we could just make it smaller. Uh, are we are we recording? We better, oh yeah, oh, always recording, okay. bro. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, you know, clearly, well, just just last night I, I made a post about the Ukraine thing, right? We are where we are. That's reality. I like to work within reality, right? So mm-hmm. I always go back, there's, you know, there's isness and oughtness, right? And Martin Luther King Jr. used these terms in a speech, and it was basically, you know, oughtness, the things we wish, that we wish things were, or things should be, or things could be, or... Where they know, ought to be? Right, the way they, Ought to be. Makes right. sense. Oughtness. Yeah. But then there's reality. Isness. Because isness is the way things is. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right yeah. now. Yeah. So to before we can ever get to oughtness, the way things should be, this utopia or whatever, just improvements. Well, we have to deal with isness. We have to deal with reality right now. And it's, it's funny. And it's actually something I'm kind of proud of. I don't know. Five six years ago, when when memes, 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 memes yeah. however you say that word, like I still refuse to even say it correctly. I think I, <laughs> at this point, I think I, I'm not even doing it. It used to be on purpose. I wouldn't say it correctly, but now, like, I don't even know what's right anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, some friends of mine, like, um, you know, uh, it was platoon where Barnes, right, the bean platoon sergeant guy, right? He's like, I am reality. You know, you got to smoke that shit to escape from reality. He's talking to. Uh, all those, the dudes are getting high, Elias and all those dudes. And uh, he's like, you got to smoke that shit to escape from reality. Well, I am reality. Well, some of my friends like put my face over a picture <laughs> of, you know, a screenshot from the movie or whatever. And I actually took it as a compliment <laughs> because that is the thing, right? Like reality, where are we right now? If we don't deal with the right now, we can never get to where we wish we were. And, and, <sighs> That's that's the problem with America right now is everybody has these wishes. We're not on track. You've got two very left and right, and you got a bunch of people in the middle who mostly agree about things, but we're just being torn apart by the left and right. And it's just And then what's worse is the the majority of Americans are still mostly conservative. The majority. But they go to work every week. They're worried about their families. They're involved in their children's extracurricular activities. Right. And so the left is over here getting all the things they want, 
and the right is just compromising every step of the way. Our lawmakers do it all the time. They're, they constantly think that they can reason or rationalize with the left. Well, if we just give them this, then they'll, they'll play nice. Well, that's why we have all the problems that we do. It's like there's a huge difference between compromise and negotiation. Compromise means I have to give up something right, right and kind of meet in the middle. Negotiation is when I start telling you what you're going to get. Right. And that's, in theory, what the majority is supposed to be able to do in our republic. We clearly don't have that right now. And I mean, you know, that, that, that compromise, you know, we're at 80 some years <clears throat> of the left just getting everything they want. Just getting everything they want. Why? Because I'm busy going to work. My dad went to work. Your dad went to work. All of us, you know, hardworking Americans went to work to take, take care of their families with the expectation that your so-called representatives would go either, you know, state representative or U.S. House representative. Your senators would go to either Raleigh in our case or D.C. in the federal level and represent us. That's not happening anymore. <clears throat> You know, it's just not happening anymore. They're representing corporations. I was about right. to say, I, I wonder how long you, I wonder what the average is before a person with good intentions gets thrown into that system and then they're quickly just brainwashed and become corrupt. Probably, I would like to give most people the benefit of the doubt, probably to the point they didn't even know it was really happening. It was just what was going on around them. So they're just kind of avoiding being abrasive. So they just kind of fall, you know, back into their little corner and then that's it. Well, your boy, voice you know, is buried. Sociology in general, right? You know, let's, and this is just, I'm still very much an outsider, right? But just my conversations with people who are involved and sitting uh, incumbents and representatives and other lawmakers, it's, it's like a slippery slope, you know, especially when you, we first get there as a freshman. You know, you're brand new, you've got no friends, you have no real influence, which is always funny, right? Like, as, as I'm campaigning, there's all, you know, all my opponents or other other candidates for other offices and they're speaking and they're the most conservative ever and they're a fighter and they're, you know, <laughs> a constitutionalist. And it's all these people saying the exact same things and they're going to go to D.C. and change the way everything works. Like, and I'm just sitting there going, it's not how it works. Right. So you get there and you need friends. So you want to become a part of a caucus or you want to be on a committee or a subcommittee or right. And you know, the first knocks you're going to get on your door are from lobbyists, yep. you know, or maybe a click. There's some clicks going on in, in the house, especially, you know, where there's some infighting between the Republicans and different clicks, you know, and that's just the thing. So how long does it take <clears throat> before you're engulfed in an environment immersion, you're immersed and you just start seeing things from that perspective. And, and you know, the funny thing is <laughs> I was aware of it because I know some really good people who before they were in government, elected officials, they were awesome people. And now they will look you straight in the face and, and, and tell you why they compromise, that it's just part of it. Uh, and, and, and they really believe it. And then other ones, you know, they're a little more arrogant and they speak down to you. I've had that happen, right? I had uh, some folks, uh, one, one, one particular fella, uh, speak down very condescendingly. And he, he, he basically said, well, when you have experience governing, you'll realize that it is all about com uh, compromise. And I was like, you're supposed to be a representative. Right. No one elected you as a governor. Right. 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 You're not really in charge. You're supposed to represent the people. But the fact that they even use those words, right? And then talk down their nose, look down their nose at the rest of us. Um, what else? I was recently referred to as an ignorant wannabe. Mercy. Right? And I'm like, yeah, Mercy. Yep, yeah, I am ignorant. I'm totally ignorant. And, you know, as I replied, to him, like, no, I'm not a wannabe. I don't want to run for house. I don't want to be. I want to move out west where I can hunt and live in the mountains and enjoy being outside. I don't want to go to D.C. Like, never in my life. I've done, heck, I didn't even want to live in Wilmington anymore, right? Wilmington traffic drove, was driving me insane. Right. So now I live in the country, right? So D.C.? Like, what am I going to 
<laughs> lose my mind, right? I was just out in San Diego and Los, uh, Los Angeles, and dude, traffic drives me insane. No, I don't want to be in government. But those arrogant, wanna, those governors or whatever they are, so-called yeah. representatives, uh, co- they like to call themselves congressmen and women. No, you're supposed to be representatives. They're the reason I'm running, man. Freaking enough's enough. Yeah. You know? I like and, and and I I don't know. I don't I think most of them are good people and they do. They just get wrapped up. They just get wrapped up in it all. And so how long does it take? What I did right before I announced, my closest buddies, only a few of them, only a few people knew as we were planning this thing. And for a couple of reasons. We didn't know the districts. I didn't want to announce that I was running at the time. You know, like living here, I didn't want to announce that I was going to run here because David Rouser is the incumbent. And by all accords, David's done a pretty good job. You know, he hasn't done anything really to upset anybody. And um, he has done a good job for agriculture. Uh, rumor is he might be the lead on the agriculture committee coming up or whatever. So I didn't want to make an enemy out of an incumbent that I didn't need to, per se. And, right. and, and then the first new districts had no incumbent. It looked great. Now the districts, who knows what they're all about. Um, but I got my closest friends uh, together and, um, five or six dudes, a couple of young ladies. And I was like, look, I need you to look me in the eye and promise me that if you see me not being me anymore, even, even a, a hint that I'm becoming a politician, if it means you, you, and you slamming me up against that wall to get my attention, you're cleared hot. Please do so. Right. Hold me accountable. Don't don't let this disease that is politician, <laughs> you know, that cancer or whatever it is that infects them the second they walk up those Capitol Hill steps. Like, you see me coming down with symptoms? Intervene. Symptoms, I like it. Yeah, yeah. intervene. Please intervene. I just wonder if the kind of the mindset changes where, you know, you go in there with a, it's just like starting a new job or doing anything else. You got all these aspirations to be so great and do so many things. And then you get in there and you, you know, you're met with so much opposition just from, because it is the way it's always been. And it's just, it almost seems too big to take on. So you kind of just become a chameleon, try not to raise too much cane and, you know, go with the flow, yeah. I guess. I, I think that's, If there ever was a time when incumbents, or excuse me, freshmen, not incumbents, freshmen can get up there and raise hell and change things, it is right now. The American people are, their eyes are opened to the corruption and they're tired of it. You know, those those hardworking conservatives, now, especially inflation, right? Sure. And it's twofold. Mask on their children. When, when the government starts screwing with good Americans' children, sure, and you know I, I don't have them, right? I, I mean, most don't have kids, but I have a lot of friends that have kids, right? Like yeah. clearly, uh, you know, I have niece and nephew that mean the world to me, and and Lord knows I wish I could spend more time with them, but they're up north, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, they they live in Boston, so you know I don't want to go, I don't want to go to Boston, so for them to come here is a little more difficult, but point is man i i can i can at least empathize with parents right i clearly will never fully understand what it's like but that was a tipping point man you know you started messing with people's kids and the mass and the oh it's really a few weeks ago when they started talking about approving the vaccine for children right people are like whoa 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 whoa, yeah pump the brakes a second right yeah and then of course you know midterms are getting closer so all of a sudden covid is is not a big deal anymore yeah it's a miracle how it's going away isn't it yeah Yeah. like apparently the cure for the coronavirus is midterm elections (laughs) (laughs) that is terrible but it's true it's horrible and and what's sad is there's still going to be a huge huge population in america that doesn't see through that 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 bs because it's all it's been man like come on you guys breathe crappy air. At any time when you guys are, I don't know, you pull out the Halley tool, you're about to crack open a door, or you're opening a vent, or whatever you're doing, right? Or you're like, oh, hold on, let me put on my cloth mask to. Yeah. <laughs> we no, just, right? You yeah. have respirators right. and full suits and. Right. Right? Like, 
And let's face it, all those particles from fire are much larger than virus. But here, put on this bullshit yeah. mask. Like, yeah. come on, man. But the reality is, there are a lot of Americans that are going to, uh, you know, ignore this. No, no, no. The the science changed. No, the science didn't change, man. Midterm elections are coming up, and Democrats are about to lose their asses. Yeah, in that's a big what's way. really going on in a big way. Yeah. No, it's going to be huge. Yeah, man, I'm liking what I'm hearing about you wanting to represent. Like, we need we need representatives back uh, in D.C. and in it's, in the houses. It, it's literally the 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 place of work, the job title, it says U.S. House of Representatives, mm-hmm. right? The word Congress actually means meeting. So if you refer to yourself as a congressperson, congressman, congresswoman, you are a man or woman or person of meetings. Good job. What does that even mean? Right? Right. Words have meanings. And right. where I come from, I put the wrong word in a mission brief or an op order or a con op, I could literally get dudes killed. People can die. Right? So words matter. So from the beginning, I was adamant. It's funny, one of the very first uh, like little logos my crew made up for me, you know, for was Calvin for Congress. And what it was, I had already talked to my main consultant. I was like, look, it is huge for me to only say I'm running for House of Representatives. Well, the graphics guy didn't get that brief. Right. So the initial thing was, you know, Calvin for Congress. And, you know, that's alliteration, man. You know, that sounds cool, right? Mm-hmm. It's like it, it clicks. Nope. I scratch it out and, you know, on my phone, you know, screenshot, scratch right. it out and typed, you know, U.S. House of Representatives underneath it. I was like, we're not ever using the word Congress because I'm telling people that I'm running to represent them, not corporations. You know, I mean, it it's screwed up the way the campaign finance is, right? Like individuals can give to a campaign up to $2,900, a household 58, right? So husband and wife or whatever. But if a PAC is supporting me, right? So let's say you own a multi-million dollar corporation. You as an individual can give me $2,900 or give the campaign $2,900. But your company can go over here and give as much as they want to the pack. So that's that's not corporate influence in our elections. That's corporate interference. And and that same corporation that 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 buys you, right? Or that gives you a bunch of money. Who do you think the first knock on your door is when you get your new office up there, you know, on Capitol Hill? Yeah, the lobby firm that that corporation yeah. and its its friends have hired to represent them. Right? It's kind of funny. Lobbyists are representatives of corporations sent to lobby the representatives. Make sure they have you have their company's best interest. Absolutely. Right. And you know what? Hey man, you know, industries need representation, right? Uh, agriculture, clearly. Right. Uh, manufacturing. There's another one in North Carolina. Right? Firemen and women need representation industries groups of people need representation um and that's what a lobby does but it's just gotten too far out of hand it's just gotten too far out of hand man you know it's like let's just reel everything back like you you mentioned foreign spending i mean if we're given country x three trillion country y four trillion Maybe we just say, hey, look, 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 we're just going to cut spending across the board, every single expenditure by 20% or 18% or whatever the number is. Right. You know, instead of saying, hey, look, we don't want to fund this country at all. I mean, we've got to have our influence around the nation. We are a world superpower. I'm not for isolation. Mm -hmm. Right. And anytime America has pulled within itself and isolated itself from the war, the world got from the world, not the war as Ukraine and all that stuff's yeah. kicking up. Current events. Right, right. right. Clearly, you see what's in the back of my head right now. I, I'm worried, man, right? like, Same. Yeah. The, the whole war thing is, well, my point is to over, you know, foreign spending and supporting our allies. That's a good thing. We want that influence. We want our allies to prosper. So investing in them is a good thing. 
But our problem is we don't invest, we waste, right? right? Like you, you know, if you want to invest your money, you probably sit down and look at the returns, potential returns at least, the market and all that stuff. But if, you know, let's say you're a young 26-year-old and you go downtown for the night, that's not an investment. That's wasting money. That's just throwing money away. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, I think our government does more of that. Whereas, yes, we do have to invest in our allies. And that's a big contention of mine is that we could have been investing less in the Middle East, wasting, we wasted in the Middle East, and investing in our southern neighbors. That would get us to all kinds of cool stuff, right? But anyway, the the spending, you know, it, it's important. We can't be isolationists. Every time we've done that, it's gotten us, it's, it's, the world's gotten out of control and we've had to go get in a fight. So, I mean, there's no this answer or that answer, right? That, that's America these days is, is like, it's, it, it's either this or it's that. Is it? It's probably in here somewhere. Right, yeah, conversation. You know? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's it's we're just all a little too too out of hand right now, you know. Yeah. And and I think the average person is tired of it. Yeah, there's know? there's always what's the old saying? There's a portion of every rumor that's true, of course, or something like that. So yeah. you know, you got these two sides. Well, is it really? Is it as clear as black and white, or is it is it muddy? You know, right. there's got to be it's got to be a way. Well, yeah. you know. It, it, <laughs> If you get in some type of disagreement with your spouse or your brother or your best bud. Yeah, anybody you, know? you care about, yeah, sure. Right. You don't start screaming at them, or at least you shouldn't, right? Maybe there are some relationships like that. Right. But you know, you don't you don't just start screaming at them, I hate you, you know, or I wish you would die, right? That's not that's not a real solution to your problem, right? You're gonna have to sit down, work it out. Um, if y'all's relationships are anything like mine. You, you might try to buck up a little bit, and then typically you apologize and, you know, say yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Right. Sounds right. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sounds perfect. <laughs> right? Yes. You know? Uh, that's, that's compromise. I would say we probably do too much of that when it comes to the right versus the left. We need to do more negotiation, right? So, like, in my relationship with Melissa, I don't, I don't really get a lot of negotiation, right? I do compromise quite mm -hmm. a bit. She would probably not agree with that, but a lot of times she doesn't see me just go, yes, ma'am. But that's what the Republicans have been doing. Like, Melissa, and I use this analogy because I think a lot of people relate to their husband and wives, right? Well, the Republicans and Democrats don't treat each other like husband and wives. They treat each other like two warring factions, you know? And if we would just kind of step back and start negotiating, let's, the right needs to stop compromising. And giving up. They've given up almost everything. Enough of that. I get so disappointed when I'm watching the news and seeing different things come up and what who right. caves. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's just a reality, man. Is that, you know, we, we just gotta bring it back to like some type of personable level. And somehow silence those extreme left and extreme right. And you know, I, the left has actually done a pretty good job silencing the extreme right. And the extreme right are some some scary mofos, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, it's you a could bit probably far. extreme you know, either way scares right. the shit out of me. The yeah. difference between extreme left is they like put pink hats on and go to DC and rally. The extreme right, they've got guns and stuff, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> right, and, yeah. you know, as they should, right? Sure. Told not saying they shouldn't, right? Like anybody in America should be able to have a gun. That's the Second Amendment, simple. But extreme right can be some scary people. But at the same time, the only reason those, the, the extreme left isn't that scary is because, like, I mean, when you look at Antifa, right, like, I mean, a bunch of skinny soy boys, <laughs> for lack of better terms, setting something on fire in cities where there's none of those right. That's right. They're not messing with them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, we all see that. Sure. You know, we see through their BS because they're, they're, they'll hit soft targets, you know, if you want to categorize that. We've got to do something. To, to cut their platform off. And, and when I, I say that, I don't mean like a manual thing, like center them on social media. I don't mean that, right? I mean like the middle left and the middle right need to come together and shush their crazies. Mm -hmm. Like go deal with your crazies, you know? It's a great... Uh, you know? Yeah, great go point. deal with your people, man. Shush them. You know, mm -hmm. cut them off. Tell them it's not acceptable to say those things. It's not acceptable to riot and loot and like stop 
you know? Same with the right. Hey, it's not acceptable to be anti-Semite or, you know, paint a swastika or something like that. It's not acceptable, right? That's not what America's a, 